Recently I made an LNA, got it fabricated from uh, JLC PCB and uh, they also did the uh, PCB assembly themselves. So in this video I'm going to show you how I did that and uh, let's get started. So here I'm showing you the schematic of the LNA. It's a simple RNA circuit with uh, two bias T's. The second bias T allows you to power the entire LNA through a single coaxial line. So this LNA has a bandpass filter to select the 125 to 160 MHz VHF band which covers the 2 meter amateur radio band and the LRPT uh, satellite transmissions, the uh, air band and uh, it also rejects the overpowering uh, FM broadcast channels. This LNA is built around the PGA103 plus uh, amplifier from many circuits and in this circuit I've added a BAV99 uh, diode for input protection, a DC blocking capacitor two bias T's, a bandpass filter and a 3.3 volt uh, linear regulator. Let's go over the PGA103 plus data sheet from uh, many circuits. Let's look at the section where it says, uh, where it gives the parameters for three volts so it has a gain of approximately 21 db which should be sufficient to drive uh, more than 100 feet of uh, coaxial rg213 line and we can also see it has a 0.5 db of noise figure uh, an input return loss of approximately uh, 13 12 dB to 10 to 12 dB in the uh, pass band it has a very good output return loss has a 1 dB compression point of uh, 18 dBm and a very good linearity of 34 dB and if you power this uh, amplifier with the 5 volt regulator then the linearity of this amplifier increases by 7 to 8 dB which is quite good it requires a bias T to power the amplifier and an input DC blocking capacitor we need to ensure that there is no DC going in the input which can damage or may cause the device to misbehave <coughs> they have given a standard uh, recommended circuit they also recommend using a uh, TCC H80 plus uh, bias T which comes from the mini circuit so this is the uh, data sheet for the TCC H80 plus RF choke which is uh, basically and in a broadband inductor from uh, many circuits which can be used uh, as a bias T and uh, I believe if we use this then the performance of the device increases even more but I don't know how much and anyway we are not planning to make our amplifier broadband we have a very specific set of frequencies to uh, focus our amplification on that's why we have the bandpass filter to prevent uh, the amplifier from being a broadband so uh, being a narrow band device we don't need the uh, broadband out of choke here but there's nothing wrong if you can afford it if you wish to use it you can go for it but uh, 
I am not going to go for it. Instead of that, I am going to build my own bias T. On the other hand, many circuits also recommend using a low frequency stabilization circuit as you can see here for the uh, lower frequencies. And why is that? Because the return input return loss for lower frequencies is uh, much lower than minus 10 dB. So there is a possibility of a significant amount of uh, reflections coming from the input. For my bias T, I have used a uh, two inductor and three capacitor configuration. Three capacitors for decoupling, two inductors for uh, acting as an RF choke. So the 2.2 micro Henry inductor ensures that uh, ensures good uh, inductive reactance at uh, lower frequencies. Let's look at the data sheet. It's available on uh, JLC PCB, which means that I can use it for the PCB assembly. This inductor has an SRF of 200 megahertz, which means that anything below, uh, if you operate this inductor below 200 megahertz, below the SRF, this is going to be an inductive uh, behavior. Anything above 200 megahertz, this inductor starts behaving uh, like a capacitor. The reactant starts to roll down. The 390 nano Henry inductor has a much higher SRF. Comes from Abracon. It's available on JLC PCD, which is a good thing. And this one has an SRF of about 510 megahertz and a current carrying capacity of 530 milliamps as you can see on the screen. So I if we plan to get rid of the bandpass filter on our LNA and plan to operate the uh, plan to operate the circuit at higher frequency we can do so even if the 2.2 micro Henry inductor uh, would go into the capacitive region by crossing over the SRF of 200 megahertz we still have the 390 nano Henry inductor uh, ensuring that we have a good uh, out of blocking capacity uh, out of blocking capability on the bias T In line, we have a one nanofarad uh, DC blocking capacitor. So, just so that uh, the DC from the uh, bias does not go into the output section of the band uh, uh, into the bandpass filter. There are two ways we can power this amplifier: one through the J1 by directly connecting uh, DC source or to the second bias T which is after the bandpass filter and on the output port so if we have DC and DC coming from the coaxial line the DC gets filtered we filter out the RF we only extract the DC and we feed it to the regulator so here's a small uh, explanation uh, for what we uh, plan on using this for Now suppose we have an antenna which is uh, 100 meters far away from the receiver shack. The it runs uh, along a 100 meter cable with a 15 dB loss. Now if the antenna receives certain signal, it's going to encounter the 15 dB loss and the signal is going to get buried under the noise floor. Now if we have an LNA of 20 dB, that LNA is going to drive the signal uh, amplify the signal right at the antenna level and drive it down the uh, 100 meter cable 
and overcome the 15 dB loss. Now in order to power the amplifier we need to feed the DC along the coaxial line. The amplifier turns on, amplifies the RF and push drives it down the 100 meter cable. The DC is going to come at the J3 connector, the inductors L4 and L2 are going to uh, block the RF and OD extract the DC and feed it into the regulator that we have here, the 3.3 regulator, 3.3 volt regulator and power up the amplifier through the second bias D. <coughs> The RF is going to get amplified and get uh, pushed out through the J3 connector. Let's look at the PCB design side of things. I'm going to import all the components and the nets to the PCB mode. I already have the board shape defined here. Let's go into layer stack manager, set the uh, PCB thickness to 0.5 mm here. It's going to be an FR4. I'm going to use a coplanar waveguide for drawing the RF cracks. So the LTM designer has the uh, option to set the coplanar waveguide parameters automatically. So I'm going to use that. If you want to learn how to draw RF nets, or the coplanar waveguide micro strip lines, you can go check my previous videos for that. Here the crack width for the RF crack comes about to 0.64 millimeters. I'm going to have a 0.254 which is 10 mils gap between the RF net and the ground. So all the things are set. I've set the impedance profile for the PCB. I've set the layer stack manager. I've set the stack up in the layer stack manager. And now I'm going to start laying out things one by one. I already set the position of the components. I mean the position of the connectors previously because uh, those are the two electromechanical parts and while you do a PCB design always make sure that you set your electromechanical parts first for example the connectors the switches and so on even the mounting holes those are usually uh, set before you start the layout before you start component placement so I look at the schematic from uh, left to right and uh, start placing components. The BAV9990 parallel diode for uh, anti-parallel protection diode came first, then the DC blocking capacitor, the PGA103+, plus, and now I am laying out the first bias T which powers the uh, PGA103 amplifier. Using the cross probe mode in Altium Designer, I'm able to select the components in the schematic and uh, they get selected in the PCB. So, makes things a lot easier. Once I set the bias T, I start with the main RF line, which consists of the bandpass filter. So, that's what I'm doing here right now. I'm going to fast forward the rest of the uh, place, uh, component placement and the PCB routing. So watch and enjoy.
what I would like is a exposed bottom layer which means no solder mask on the bottom side this would be especially useful when I want to mount this amplifier in a metallic case or a metallic uh, blade so that will allow me to have a very good ground connection with the metallic surface on which I'm going to mount this I left a small patch of solder mask over the uh, power line to avoid short circuit with ground whenever I plan to mount this in an enclosure and now the amplifier is ready the board is ready for fabrication and right after this I prepared the Gerber files the bomb the assembly files like the pick and place file and all sort of things which are required for getting this fabricated and I sent this off to JLCPCB for fabrication 10 days later I had this uh, fully assembled PCB in my hand I tested this on Nano VNA and Tiny SA and it works wonderfully I have a bunch of these saved in my storage box and they are for sale on Tindy so if you if you want one you can grab them from the Tindy the link is down below and if you like the content of this video do consider subscribing mm -hmm.